When Cole Morris was two years old, he broke his thigh bone on the dance floor at a wedding. He's got a cast that goes from here all the way down to the end of one of his legs and part way down another leg. And he was still in diapers, so they had to cut a hole in it. We had to put the diaper. It was terrible. It was terrible. His treatment ultimately cost about $13,000. But Jason Morris, his wife Tina, and their six kids don't have health insurance. Instead, they belong to Samaritan Ministries, an organization of devout Christians that chip in to cover each other's medical bills. Samaritan members from all over the country mailed them small checks until they had accumulated enough to pay all their bills. So in essence, that huge traumatic experience with my son, we had the emotional side of it, but the financial side of it was completely taken care of through other people sending us checks for the, for the, for the total amount. Samaritan is headquartered in Peoria, Illinois, where 94 staffers work to coordinate the bill sharing process. It requires that its members send $370 each month to another family to help pay for a medical need. The organization has about 86,000 members spread among all 50 states, which makes it the largest of three so-called healthcare sharing ministries in the U.S. The philosophy is that patients are ultimately responsible for their own medical bills, but in times of crisis, the larger community comes together to help carry the burden. When I send my check, I usually stick a little sticky note on there or a card that says, hey, uh, you know, Bob, I'm praying for you this month and uh, hope you're doing well and uh, pray you have, that you'd be completely healed and whole again. And you recognize that, you know, every dollar I send is going to go help that person who's experiencing that crisis right now. There's some real satisfaction in that. Samaritan will probably soon become a thing of the past, a casualty of Obamacare. And its likely fate is just one example of how the new law is further eroding the sort of personal engagement that the healthcare industry desperately needs. The reason Samaritan's in trouble is simple. It will have to compete with plans on the new healthcare exchanges that are also tailored to people who don't get insurance through their jobs. But the deck is stacked. For most Samaritan members, buying insurance on the exchanges will be much cheaper thanks to massive taxpayer subsidies. Take the average Samaritan household, which has three members and an annual income of about $40,000. Under Obamacare, that family will pay somewhere around $2,500 per year to buy a standard policy on the new healthcare exchanges. Why so cheap? Because for a family at this income level, federal taxpayers will pick up about two-thirds of the total cost of the insurance policy. Compare that $2,500 price tag to the cost of an annual membership in Samaritan. And thanks to taxpayers, the average family will pay in the neighborhood of $2,000 per year for quitting Samaritan and signing up for a subsidized insurance plan with richer benefits. Overall, Samaritan members have incomes low enough that about 90% of them will be eligible for federal subsidies. What ties us together is not our desire to get our health care bills met. James Lansbury, who is Samaritan's executive vice president, says most members will stick with the organization regardless. This is part of who we are. It's part of our DNA as the Christian church. And instead of wanting to be a part of an insurance company when I joined, I wanted to be a part of something where the body of Christ was actually banding together and doing what the Bible commanded in a more personal and real way. And Samaritan Ministries was a great example of that, and I wouldn't want to do anything else for my own health care. But it would hardly be the first time that a new government entitlement destroyed a voluntary organization built around commonly held beliefs. In a sense, Samaritan is one of the last mutual aid societies, organizations that once played an integral role in American life. They were geared towards providing temporary help to those unlucky enough to lose a job or get sick without creating permanent dependency. Mutual aid societies started disappearing with the rise of government programs like welfare, Medicaid, food stamps, and unemployment insurance. Subsidized health insurance plans through Obamacare certainly provide richer benefits, but they do away with incentives that over time are the key to driving down prices and driving up quality. For example, under the standard plan on the health care exchanges, when patients go to the doctor, they're responsible for no more than $45 out of pocket, and insurance pays the rest. Samaritan members would generally pay the entire bill out of pocket because they can only ask other members to cover bills that exceed $300. Absolutely. We hold out longer than somebody who has a, an insurance plan and will just, you know, do the $5 copay or whatever because we know it's going to cost us. I don't really see that as a problem. I actually see it as a good thing. Um, it's kind of like, um, <laughs> I hope it's not too crass to compare it to waiting for the sale at Menards, you know. <laughs> you don't buy the front door when they're 140 you buy them when they're on sale for 100 under Obamacare, patients can get a whole range of preventative services and pay nothing out of pocket. 
When Samaritan members get the same procedures, they have to pay the entire bill themselves. Now, if you're a doctor and you know the patient who you have to look in the eye, you will never have to pay a single penny of the cost of a colonoscopy or a mammogram or a pap smear. You're going to try to raise your price because there's no reason not to. Samaritan is designed so that its members actually care about what things cost. Roger Stuber, who belongs to Samaritan and works as a residential contractor in Tremont, Illinois, has gone to extreme lengths to save money for his fellow members. He had brain surgery last year to repair a leaky vein in the right side of his head. A, a pool of blood right in this area of my brain. The hospital initially was going to charge him more than $63,000 for his surgery. Even though he'd be reimbursed by other members, he negotiated the bill down to just over $36,000. When he was billed $5,000 for a follow-up MRI, at first the hospital refused to offer him much of a discount. So I finally looked up where their financial department was, drove out to their finance offices, sat down and wanted to speak to the lady in charge. The hospital eventually agreed to accept just under $1,500 if Stuber would pay cash on the spot. I'm part of a body there at Samaritan. If I can keep costs down, I'm, I'm helping the group. It's the sort of effort that no patient covered by one of Obamacare's health plans would ever bother with. Whatever the fate of Samaritan Ministries, the growing role of government in the sector is taking away the power of individuals to make health care cheaper and better.